so let's make a start. So uh, thanks everyone for coming along today. Um, this is another one of those two-part um, shorter talk formats. So both speakers are from Florida State University and first up's um, the group lead, Dr. Wei Guo, who's gonna tell us about the true mechanism of spontaneous order from turbulence in a two-dimensional superfluid. So please, when you're ready, Wei, take it away. Okay, uh, thanks, Andrew. Let me get it started. Um, first, I'd like to thank the organizers uh, to give me this uh, opportunity to present our recent research. In this uh, first talk, uh, I will discuss our recent numerical work on studying the emergent vortex order in two-dimensional uh, superfluid turbulence. Uh, so first, let me briefly introduce our group. Uh, our cryogenics lab is located at National High Magnetic Field Laboratory in Tallahassee, the capital of Florida State. Uh, currently, we have two postdocs uh, and a number of uh, PhD students. Um, the work I'm going to present uh, was done by uh, our PhD student, Kosuke Kainai. And later, uh, our postdoc, Yolanda, uh, she will uh, discuss her PTV flow visualization work. Uh, here's the outline of my talk. In the first part, I will introduce the background and discuss the concept of unsung vortices, and then explain our motivation. In the second part, I will present our numerical study of the vortex dynamics in both the disk and the two-dimensional spherical BEC shell. Through this discussion, I wanted to uh, show you the true mechanism of unsung vortices in two-dimensional superfluid turbulence. And then in the third part, I will back up our uh, understanding using additional case studies. Okay, to begin with, let me uh, briefly introduce uh, the concept of unsung vortices. In two-dimensional uh, fluids, such as uh, Jupiter's atmosphere and the soap films, uh, quite often large scale and persistent uh, vortex structures can be observed. In order to uh, explain the appearance of, the, of those large scale vortices, uh, Ansaka first proposed a simplified point vortex model. This model applies to bounded two-dimensional fluid containing point-like uh, vortices. Uh, it essentially states that when more and more energy is injected into the two-dimensional fluids, in the end, the like-signed vortices must aggregate together uh, in order to induce strong flow to sustain the high kinetic energy. Those large-scale vortices uh, the so-called Ansaga vortex clusters. It's interesting that the Ansaga vortices, the Ansaga vortex state is associated with the negative temperature. This can be easily understood uh, if we check the maximum entropy state where the vortices are all uh, are essentially randomly distributed. Um, then uh, in the Ansaga state, um, the energy is higher, but since the vortices are organized into clusters, the entropy is lower. Since the temperature is essentially the derivative of energy with respect to entropy, so in the Ansaka state, the temperature is negative. Uh, Ansaka's model is, uh, was, uh, was proposed for 2D turbulence in general, but it's more relevant to two dimensional uh, quantum fluids, such as superfluid helium film and, uh, uh, say, two dimensional Bose Einstein condensate, because in those quantum fluids, vortices are indeed quantized topological uh, point, uh, topological defects. Experimentally, uh, the negative temperature on saga vortices uh, were observed in both Einstein condensate. Those vortices are produced by mechanically forcing the condensate, essentially injecting a lot of uh, energy at a large scales. Uh, what I am more interested in is the numerical work reported in those two papers uh, in 2014. Uh, it was shown that in planar both Einstein condensate, even without any energy injection, without forcing, the unsung vortices can still spontaneously emerge in the free decay of the two-dimensional turbulence. Uh, this observation is a bit counterintuitive, uh, which excited a lot of uh, subsequent research. A widely accepted explanation for this phenomenon is the so-called vortex evaporative heating mechanism, which essentially uh, 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 refers to uh, vortex anti-vortex pair annihilations. Um, uh, those annihilations essentially remove vortex pairs that are closely separated from each other. Uh, those vortex pairs do not 
uh, induce larger scale flows. So their removal simply decreased the number of vortices, but does not change too much the total kinetic energy possessed by uh, the vortex system. As a consequence, the specific energy of the vortices uh, increases uh, during this process, which can drive the vortex system into the negative temperature state. Uh, this explanation is very reasonable, and uh, especially it has been shown theoretically that as the specific energy of the vortices increases, eventually uh, the vortices can condense into compact uh, vortex clusters. Uh, in a disk BC with zero angular momentum, it has been shown that uh, a dipole configuration of the uncycled vortices would appear. So when I first read all these results, a question came to my mind is, what if we confine the vortices uh, on the surface of a sphere, say in a spherical BEC shell? In this geometry, uh, we know that the appearance of uh, a dipole configuration of uncycled vortices is always associated with finite angular momentum. So if the BEC uh, has zero angular momentum to begin with, then such a dipole configuration of the uncycled vortices would be prohibited. Then the question is, what should be the right uh, configuration uh, uh, to look for? Uh, here, I would like to thank uh, Sergey and Christian uh, for very helpful discussions, which made me realize that uh, the correct uncycled vortex configuration that I should look for is this uh, special quadrupole uh, configuration where two pairs of like-signed vortices, uh, vortex clusters are located across uh, two perpendicular diameter uh, on the sphere. Such a configuration gives the highest kinetic energy, but in the meanwhile, conserves zero angular momentum. So we set out to look for this uh, exotic uh, uncycled vortex pattern, but as I will show you, uh, the result is a bit unexpected. Before I show you the result, I'd like to mention that spherical BC shell can be realized in microgravity using the NASA's Cold Atom Laboratory at the International Space Station. For more details, you may check uh, this paper. All right, to study the vortex dynamics uh, in BEC, we conducted a numerical simulation using three-dimensional gross Pedevsky equation. And then to create quasi-2D BEC in both the disk geometry and spherical shell geometry for comparative uh, study, we adopted confining potential reported in literature. For instance, for the disk BEC, the BEC is tightly confined in the Z direction. And in the X, Y direction, we have this uh, hypertangent potential. So the BEC is confined with a radius of capital R. And then for the spherical BEC shell, the BEC is tightly confined to a radius capital R. Then uh, we non-dimensionalized gross Pedevsky equation and choose the interaction and the potential parameters to match that with the existing uh, simulation work and the experimental work. We also uh, choose the radius of the disk BEC and the spherical BEC such that their surface area uh, are similar, uh, exactly the same. So for the initial state, we imprint the velocity field of 80 vortices and 80 anti-vortices in the BEC. And then uh, those vortices are randomly distributed. We also made sure that uh, in the initial state, the angle momentum of the BEC is nearly zero. Uh, so we evolved the GPE and then started how the vortices evolve. Here are uh, the movies showing the vortex dynamics. For better visibility, uh, we marked the vortices of different signs in different color. So uh, one can see that in the disk BEC case, uh, two large scale vortex clusters uh, appeared. But in the spherical BEC uh, case, uh, we don't seem to see any uh, clusters of vortices. Um, so again, in the disk BEC case, we observed two counter-rotating uncycled vortex clusters. And upon the formation of those uh, uncycled vortex clusters, the pair annihilation inside the BEC almost stopped. Uh, this, observations, uh, this observations agree quite well with uh, what's reported by similar and uh, colleagues. Uh, but for the spherical BC case, we don't uh, seem to see the quadrupole uncycled vortex conf configurations we uh, showed earlier. Um, one may argue that probably there are uncycled vortices in the spherical BC, 
it's just that they are not clearly visible. Indeed, there are ways to make more quantitative judgment whether unsucked vortices ever appear in the BEC or not. Here, we adopt uh, the energy judgment. We know that the, the total kinetic energy of the BEC uh, in the GPE framework can be decomposed into three contributions. The first is the incompressible kinetic energy associated with the flow induced by the vortices. The second part is the so-called compressible kinetic energy, which is due to phonons, essentially uh, sound waves in the BEC. And then the last part is a quantum pressure term, is due to the quantum pressure term in the uh, GPE. Uh, to calculate the incompressible kinetic energy associated with the vortices, normally what people do is uh, they first extract the location of all vortices in the GPE simulation, and then apply a point of vortex Hamiltonian to calculate this part of the energy. This point vortex Hamiltonian for the two geometries are listed here. There are already you know, uh, discussions about this Hamiltonian. So um, we calculated the incompressible kinetic energy associated with the vortices as a function of time for both geometries. Uh, those are shown as the black circles, okay? Um, besides that, we also included two reference energies, the EC and the E star. Uh, here, the EC refers to a threshold energy above which N vortex system would enter the negative temperature state, okay? And then E star is a reference energy that we introduced above which unsucked vortex clusters can be easily observed. Um, so as we can see in the disk BC case, the specific energy of the vortices increases rapidly and gets above E star. So that confirms unsucked vortices indeed appeared in the disk BC. But for the spherical BC shell, uh, what we see is that the specific energy of the vortices remains low and it never gets above E star. So that confirms uh, the unsucked vortices never formed in spherical BC shell, okay? Um, so that raised a question because uh, evaporative heating, essentially vortex pair annihilations occurred in both cases. But we see that in one case, there are unsucked vortices, but in the other case, there are, there's no unsucked vortices. Um, so this slide discuss uh, how the two reference energies are calculated. But um, to save some time, I'm going to uh, skip this slide. If anyone is interested in the details, I'll, I'll, I'll come back to the slide and discuss the details. Essentially, the, the two reference energies are calculated using the so-called Markov chain Monte Carlo method. This is a well-established method for this purpose. All right, so we see that the dynamics of the vortices in the two geometries are quite different. This obviously calls for an explanation. A hint is obtained from our study of the total vortex number decay. Uh, it has been shown by Andrew and Carlo uh, that uh, in, two, in ideal two-dimensional BEC, vortex pair annihilation uh, is indeed a four vortex interaction process. Um, so in general, if the decay of the vortices is controlled by uh, n vortex interaction process, then the total vortex number would scale with time as t to the minus one over n minus one. N is the n body interaction. So um, we started the uh, vortex number decay data. It turns out that the decay data can be fitted very well uh, using this expression with n equals to 2.4 for the disk BEC case and n equals to three for the spherical BEC case. Uh, the n equals to three scaling is likely generic for pair annihilation in quasi 2D BECs. Uh, this is the reason why we observed such a scaling for a uh, spherical BEC shell, because in a spherical BEC shell, the vortices can decay only via pair annihilation. Then the n equals to 2.4 scaling for the disk to BC case suggests the coexistence of two processes. One is a two vortex process, the other is a three vortex process. So the overall behavior is something in between. Indeed, there are two processes through which the vortices can decay. The first is pair annihilation inside of the BEC. That is a three vortex process. 
the, the second process is the vortices escaping or exiting from the disk boundary. That is the two vortex process because such a process can be considered as the annihilation of a vortex with its image charge in the presence of a second vortex. So this is a two vortex process. Um, so to understand the consequence of this different vortex decay mechanism, we conducted the GPE simulation uh, for the pair annihilation of a single isolated vortex pair in the disk PEC, and also the escaping of a single vortex from the disk boundary. Uh, definitely, we uh, first of all introduced a little bit of damping so the two vortices can approach each other, and also the single vortex can approach the, the disk boundary. But then uh, when the two vortices are close enough, we remove the artificial damping. So the annihilation process and the escaping process uh, is not affected by the added damping. So here's the movie. As you can see, uh, for the pair annihilation process, huge amount of sound waves are emitted. But when a single vortex uh, merge into the zero density boundary region, uh, almost a negligible uh, amount of sound waves are observed. Um, we know that the sound waves can dissipate the incompressible kinetic energy possessed by the vortex system and the damp the motion of all vortices. This process is pretty much similar like the mutual friction damping uh, of the quantized vortices by the normal fluid in superfluid helium. So, Essentially, the unsaga vortices could be prohibited by uh, the intense sound waves. This observation uh, leads to two conclusions. The first is that the pair annihilation, which is essentially the evaporative heating uh, mechanism, uh, it does not lead to a spontaneous formation of unsaga uh, vortex order because of the sound wave emission. And then the true mechanism responsible for uh, the appearance of unsaga vortices is indeed the vortices escaping from the BC boundary. Um, to back up our conclusion, um, we conducted um, additional case studies. So in the first case study, um, we wanted to show um, the evaporative heating mechanism would work in spherical BC if there's no sound wave involved. To do that, uh, we adopted the point of vortex model. We move the vortices. Uh, so we, we start from the same initial uh, vortex configuration, and then we move the vortex point uh, using the equation of motion derived from the point of vortex Hamiltonian. And then to mimic the pair annihilation process, we remove positive and negative vortex pairs when their separation distance is smaller than uh, some small uh, distance, like 3% uh, of the radius of the sphere. So um, here's the simulation. Uh, as we can see, as time goes, uh, in the end, the vortices evolve into four clusters. So um, we do see Ansaga vortices in this case. Uh, this is not a very surprising because uh, in such a model, when we remove a pair of positive and negative vortices at small separation, if you check the Hamiltonian, it's pretty much like you, you, you remove a large negative uh, quantity from the uh, Hamiltonian. So uh, the total uh, incompressible kinetic energy, or I mean the total energy of this point of vortex system, uh, keep increases as you remove more and more uh, vortex pairs. So that inevitably drives the vortex system into the unsuck state. And uh, this uh, uh, vortices uh, essentially evolve towards the uh, limiting quadrupole configuration as we showed in earlier slides. So uh, this simulation shows that the evaporative heating mechanism would work fine in the absence of sound emission. And this simulation also calls for caution when using the point vortex model to understand the vortex dynamics in real BEC because in real BEC, there are sound waves and the sound waves can make a difference. All right, in the second case study, we um, started the vortex dynamics in a square BEC. 
uh, using gross Pilevsky equation. So again, we imprint the velocity field of 80 vortices and, and 80 uh, uh, anti-vortices. Uh, they are randomly distributed and the initial uh, angular momentum is nearly zero. Um, the advantage of the square shape is that now we can easily change the boundary condition from a box wall boundary to a period periodic boundary condition. The box wall is essentially the uh, hypertension potential as I showed earlier. Uh, so we can easily change the boundary conditions. Um, as a consequence, um, the vortex dynamics with and without the escaping mechanism can be studied and compared uh, in the same geometry. So we evolved the GP equation and uh, started the vortex uh, dynamics. Uh, in the end, uh, again, we do observe some large scale vortex structures in the, in the case with the box wall boundary, but uh, for the case with the periodic uh, boundary condition, uh, we don't uh, see large scale uh, vortex structures. So this simulation again confirms the critical role of vortex escaping uh, in the formation of uh, Ansaga vortex order in two dimensional superfluid turbulence. Um, I think that's pretty much everything. So here's the uh, summary. Uh, I'll skip uh, this bullet. And uh, I wanted to mention that this work has been submitted to physical review letter and it has received quite positive reviews. Uh, for more details, you may read the menu, manuscript in archive. Okay, thank you. Thanks very much, Wei, for a very interesting talk. <clears throat> Are there any questions? Either <clears throat> raise your hand or, or feel free to pop something in the chat. I mean, could it be that vortices leaving the system just help speed up you reaching the negative energy state in that even if you don't have them leaving the boundary, you would still get there. It's just the time scale for reaching it is much slower that you might not see it in a numerical simulation. Uh, you mean in a spherical case? Well, in, in, any, in, in the spherical or, or indeed in the periodic. And not really. Uh, we, we actually sim conduct this simulation for a very long time. In the end, the vortices will decay to a very small number. I mean, if you check the uh, total vortex number, you will see uh, the number of vortices will decay to a very low level. Uh, in that case, I don't think it's uh, you know, reliable anymore to judge whether there's uh, vortex clusters or not. Samuli, your hand is raised. Yes, um, I might ask a, a simple and potentially very stupid question. Um, so you were talking about these like n vortex processes for annihilation of vortices. Could you mm -hmm. give some like um, hand waving picture of what it what does it mean in practice for a an annihilation process to be, for example, a three vortex process? Oh, yeah, uh, sorry, I didn't explain this uh, very clearly. Um, there are more detailed discussion in this paper by Andrew and, uh, and Carlo. Essentially, uh, if you imagine a pair of uh, positive and negative vortices in ideal two-dimensional BEC, if there's no damping, the two vortices will not annihilate. They will simply form a pair and propagate, right? Um, then if you want the pair of vortices to uh, annihilate, uh, you must bring in a third vortex to interact with this pair. Uh, so the third vortex can carry away some part of the kinetic energy. And then the uh, pair of vortices can uh, approach each other and uh, undergo the, uh, recon uh, the uh, annihilation process. And then after the annihilation, uh, there will be some sort of uh, soliton structure created. And then uh, you need a fourth vortex to you know, essentially uh, uh, annihilate this uh, uh, soliton structure and then uh, get rid of uh, uh, the uh, vortex pair uh, residual structure. So that's why uh, they uh, concluded that the vortex pair annihilation in ideal 2D BC is via a four vortex interaction process. Uh, but I wanted to show that actually in quasi 2D BC, um, the pair annihilation 
uh, is a three vortex interaction process. Uh, I do have a backup slide. So we also uh, calculated the uh, vortex number uh, decay curve uh, in the square BC case. So this is a different geometry. Uh, and again, we observed that uh, when there's a periodic boundary condition, uh, the decay uh, can be fitted very well with n equals to three. So if the vortices are allowed to uh, decay only by pair annihilation, uh, we always see this n equals to three scaling. So that's why we believe uh, the n equals to three scaling is probably generic for uh, quasi 2 dBC. Uh, what's reported in Andrew's paper is uh, the decay of uh, due to pair annihilation in ideal uh, 2 dBC. So that's slightly different because in quasi 2 dBC, I think the interaction between uh, vortices and the sound waves is uh, enhanced compared to ideal 2 dBs. Okay, thank you very much. Yep. I'm conscious of time, but I did have just one quick one. Just what's your physical picture then for how vortices leaving at the boundary helps you get into the formation of the Onsaga vortices? Because the kind of vortex evaporation or you know, this kind of um, yeah, I, annihilation I, I... of the opposite is appealing. And it's, a, it's a very simple picture, whereas this is more complicated. Yeah, um, I, I think... Uh, the escaping process uh, probably can be called as a uh, boundary evaporation. So uh, during this process, the number of vortices decreases and there's no sound wave generated. And the kinetic energy, total kinetic energy of the vortex system remains almost a constant. So uh, for such a process, uh, indeed, the specific energy of the vortices keeps increasing. And since there's no significant sound wave emission, so uh, the kinetic energy, the incompressible kinetic energy of the vortices will not be dissipated by sound waves. That's why I think eventually the vortex system is uh, driven into uh, the negative temperature on a like vortex state. But if you only have a pair annihilation, as we already see, the, the strong sound wave uh, generated during the pair annihilation, and then the sound waves can damp out the motion of the vortices. So that actually prohibits the formation of an vortices. Okay. 